Hey guys, Luke here. I can't believe it. You probably can't believe it. Two videos in two days. This is just unheard of for my channel, at least lately anyways. I haven't uploaded in a couple of months and all of a sudden I'm uploading two videos in two days. Anyways, let's get into the video. I'm going to be talking about John Bateman. Now, where do you start? I mean, there's been a lot of controversy about John Bateman lately. Uh, obviously, I think he's just said to the Raiders officially that he wants out. Um, apparently, there is a clause in his contract. So it's not as if he's sort of forcing his, their hand or anything. This is an option they've given him. So um, in terms of Raiders management, I don't know what the hell you're doing. You've paid big money to um, pay his transfer fee and bring him over to the NRL. And then you've put in a clause in his contract that allows him to like renegotiate or something along the lines of that. So I think that's very strange from the Raiders. And I think in the future, they probably won't do that. And I hope the Bulldogs certainly haven't done that with Luke Thompson. That could be... Uh, a big, big problem uh, in a couple seasons. I mean, with John Bateman, didn't even take a couple seasons. He literally played one whole season in, in the NRL, and he's already wanting to test his market um, or test his value um, on the open market. So, yeah, I can't blame John Bateman. Uh, he is a very, very good player. Uh, don't get me wrong. However, I always have this thing. Um, I feel like John Bateman is sort of player. People talk him up as a great second rower, and he is. He is a he's a good second rower. Um, whether he is a great, incredible second row, I don't know. Um, he's one of those solid sort of players, but he's got a few injuries now. Um, he is getting older. I'm not sure his exact age. I think he's high 20s, maybe mid to high 20s. So he's not exactly like super young or anything, and he's got shoulder injuries. In fact, he's not playing the rest of the season with the Raiders due to the shoulder surgery. Um, so there is a little bit of injury clouds over him. So I can see why he wants to make as much money as he can because maybe he knows his shoulder isn't going to last that long. He wouldn't be the first NRL player uh, to have his um, career cut short due to injuries. So, uh, I mean, he's been pretty open. He's come out and said it is about the money. So that's why I actually really like John Bateman for that. Uh, I'm so sick of all these players saying, oh, well, I'm homesick and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I suppose him, though, he can't really use the homesick excuse because they'd be going all the way back to England and... I suppose, not making as much money as what he wants. I assume the money would be in the NRL. Uh, he just won second row of the year last year, so I think he'd be crazy to head back to England. However, I guess that is an option. Another option is apparently the Bulldogs. Uh, Bulldogs quite desperate at this point. They've just signed Luke Thompson, uh, one of his England international teammates, so maybe the Bulldogs is a good destination for him. Um, whether I think he's a good fit for the Bulldogs, I'm not so sure. This is what I was kind of saying in terms of uh, him being a great player, a good player, that sort of stuff, the difference. I feel like if you chuck in other players who play the same position, your kick outs, your David Fafitas and stuff, I think you throw them into the Bulldogs side, they make an immediate impact. David Fafita is on the market at the moment, fantastic player, um, big money being thrown at him by Titans and a few other teams. I think even the Roosters being talked about lately, so that says his quality. However, with John Bateman, um, there's no other real top team sort of trying to get him, and I feel like he's the sort of player who just fits in the Raiders system. You chuck him in another team, maybe not that great. I mean, I don't think he's like a reserve grader or like anything like that. I wouldn't go that far. But in terms of him being a star second rower, I think it's just because he fits in with that Canberra sort of forward pack. They're not exactly a team that's built around size, um, which a lot of NRL teams are. They have the big boppers. Um, Raiders aren't one of them, no. Plus, they've got all the other English guys in the side. They've also added George Williams there, so you add another one. Um, but the whole four pack, Whitehead was already there. There was a lot of people to make his transition over to the NRL a little bit more comfortable. But, um, yeah. But, yeah, in terms of him... Um, I But yeah, just in terms of how much money he'd be commanding on the open market, you would think, and how much the Bulldogs would probably sign him for, and how much he expects um, compared to what the Raiders are giving, and you know what even um, Super League teams would give him. I don't know if he's good value for money. And Bulldogs have already signed enough players uh, who've turned up at the club, already busted. I mean, Kieran Foran is a perfect example. Great player on his day. When he's fit, great player. It's just a matter of, is he fit? Probably not. Um, John Bateman remains to be seen how he goes because he still hasn't played. He's uh, trying to get off contract while injured. So uh, you see a lot of players, they worry about getting injured in their contract year. And John Bateman's essentially forced his own hand there. Uh, and he's put himself out of contract, I guess. I suppose he can always go back to the Raiders. But uh, essentially, he's the one asking for a new contract while injured. So I feel like a lot of teams would have that big sort of question mark over him as to whether, you know, whether he will come back um, as good as what he was 
last season because last season was very very good but he's also an unknown under the radar a little bit uh the Raiders as a whole were under the radar a bit so yeah John Bateman I think he's a great player but just the, the value um of his contract I'm not exactly sure now one thing I just want to touch on is the fact that the player managers I think are really really uh hurting the NRL just hurting sport in general player agents you go um look at soccer I mean NBA and that sort of stuff uh mainly soccer I should say um, soccer, it's a huge part of the game. Um, if you piss off the right, uh, the wrong manager, you're stuffing yourself out of some quality players. Um, all it takes is a run in with the manager, and all of a sudden the player wants out. Um, half the time, I feel like when players uh, have the shits at a club, it's not even down to, you know, the actual player having the shits at the club. I think it's down to the manager having a falling out uh, with the players. And we've just seen a few. Uh, was it Moses? Uh, Mitchell Moses cousin or something he's had a falling out with some players and there's been ones deregistered and all that sort of stuff so there is a lot of controversy at the moment about player managers and I definitely think they're hurting the game big time um, obviously they're all about the money they don't have any sort of interest in the player as far as I'm concerned uh, in terms of uh, who's going to make them the best football and that sort of stuff actually I will say it's been quite interesting I've been listening to uh, the Jonathan Thurston book I've been listening to the audiobook version and he was very complimentary of Sam Ayub, I think, in terms of um, looking out for him and stuff and how he's very loyal to Sam Ayub. And I think it was interesting that he sort of said, like, he really, really trusted what um, Sam Ayub had to say. And even Ayub said things like taking lesser money to stay, say, like, at the Bulldogs. He wanted to stay at the Bulldogs, and he said, yeah, that would be a good option uh, for your career at this point, rather than leaving, I think it was to the Rabbitohs, um, and he ended up winning a premiership and sort of developing himself as a player and earning himself a lot more money the next year, uh, rather than moving to the Rabbitohs, which at the time were sort of in shambles. So, and I think that's what Thurston said at the time, and it sort of just showed that some of the player managers do care. They do care to an extent. However, I feel like the financial part of it is in um, is at the forefront for them and is in their best interest. Obviously, they're making money. The players want to make money. They are benefiting the players, of course, but I think they're benefiting themselves mostly and they're trying to look after each other um, in terms of the player and the manager. But, yeah, it's, just, uh, it's really annoying to see what I feel like the player manager is really driving this John Bateman situation. I feel like for him and for him, like just himself personally, he's a good fit for Canberra. He can probably get the money over the next couple of years, but this is also another problem when players, uh, sorry, when teams come up and they find these sort of hidden gems. I know John Bateman's not exactly a hidden gem, but he wasn't a household name in Australia at least, probably not even in England. Um, I think he had a couple of years at Wigan where he was probably a high profile player, but it's not like he'd been a star for like a decade or something. Um, so he's come over to the NRL as an unknown. Like a lot of the, the players Raiders have signed, they've signed a lot of Englishmen, come over to the NRL and we have no idea. You can't tell me you guys knew who George Williams was. It's not like we're big Super League watchers. I mean, it's on at weird times. Um, all the like the coverage of it isn't even great either. Um, we might see a replay, but I mean, even in England, I don't even think they show all of the games. So yeah, there's no real way to be a super big fan of Super League in Australia, um, let alone even in England. But uh, in terms of just knowing players and that sort of stuff, John Bateman was an unknown. Probably wasn't exactly scouted by a lot of um, NRL teams, and I feel like a lot of the Raiders players have done that. I mean, Josh Hodgson, perfect example, perfect example. Uh, I remember uh, a lot of the talk around England hookers was that Daryl Clark, I think, James Roby, a couple of those guys. Nowhere did I ever hear anything about Josh Hodgson. He comes over uh, to the Raiders. In fact, the first thing I heard about Josh Hodgson was him jumping through a bloody wall. Uh, you can probably find the video somewhere, but that was um, my first sort of time hearing about Josh Hodgson. And then all of a sudden he comes out here and absolutely kills it. Now, if he had like come out here, played like one good season, and then immediately went, nah, I'm leaving. God, could you imagine it? Imagine if every player did that. Ryan Madison is another one. It virtually had sort of one standout season, and then they go, stuff it, I want a new contract. And it sort of, it really, um, it really bothers me because there's no sort of hidden gems. And especially in the salary cap era where, you know, you're trying to get your bang for your buck in players. They're not doing it. The players are not letting them, um, letting them clubs do it. The managers aren't letting the clubs do it. And I know we talk a lot about player loyalty and stuff, and the club definitely needs 
Uh, you know, there's definitely times where clubs have no loyalty to, the, to their players and they kick them to the curb. Okay, guys, so I just got done recording the video and I realized I pressed the wrong button. In fact, I didn't actually press the button at all. So I didn't actually start recording. Now, on my camera, I can only record, I think it's something like 10 minutes and I'm supposed to stop it and then start it again. Anyways, I didn't do that. Um, so you can tell I'm a bit rusty in making these videos. So apologies about that, but the video hasn't got much longer to go. So anyways, I'll just keep listening to the video. Um, and I understand the players also don't owe anything to the club, but I mean John Bateman has signed a couple year contract um, I know he's got the the opt-out clause whatever so maybe he's not the best example But just my frustration in general uh, of player managers. I mean it's happening far too often Ryan Madison is one they just they just force it and Clubs are getting to the point where they're sort of getting being pressured in to oh well We can't um, sit them in reserve grade. Oh, it's so bad. We can't punish them blah 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 I'd say stuff them, sit them in reserve grade. They've got to prove a point at some point in these clubs because players are sort of running the show at the moment. And uh, John Bateman is the latest example of um, sort of the club getting screwed out of it. I mean, maybe the Raiders should have just given him a bigger contract. Maybe he deserved it. I don't know. That's up for the Raiders to decide. But we'll see how, uh, how he goes on the open market now considering uh, he's made himself a free agent essentially. Bulldogs, Wigan, uh, I don't know, someone, Super League, Titans maybe, who knows, leave in the comment section below, where do you think John Bateman will end up? Personally, well, I think he'll probably end up at the Bulldogs, Bulldogs have a lot of money to spend, just sign Luke Thompson, uh, will he fit in the fourth back? Maybe he will, maybe he will, I don't know, I feel like Dylan Napper is underperforming, Aiden Tomlin's getting older, they're, but they're your props, they're kind of solid-ish, you add in Luke Thompson, so there's a decent sort of prop rotation, the second rowers a little bit weak considering how Rionara um, got sacked. So they do need a second rower. If John Bateman had been up for grabs at the start of the year, 100%, but after the shoulder injury, it does worry me a little. Um, and it worries me that we'd end up paying overs for a person who's going to be on the sideline more often than not, just like we've done with Kieran Foran. And obviously, it doesn't work well for the salary cap. And yeah, it wouldn't work well for the Bulldogs. Anyway, guys, that's just my thoughts on the situation. I thought I'd uh, let you know thoughts on John Bateman. Obviously, I love John Bateman as a player. Seems like a good bloke off it too. Has a good banter on Twitter and stuff. Um, seems a funny character. But yeah, just in terms of this whole situation, not really a big fan. Even just down to him denying it for so long and then coming out now. So it's so obvious they were onto it and him coming out publicly and denying it and calling out journalists and stuff. It's just like, man, if if you're clearly doing it, like, why are you denying it so hard? Uh, which I suppose, in a sense, is it proved that he was doing it, the fact that he was coming out. A lot of the times when they come out and deny it, it ends up being the case of them actually being right. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I'll leave uh, the video here. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave the like, uh, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, make sure to follow me on all social media. It's on the screen right now. Mr. Luke and White T for Facebook, uh, actually for Twitter and Instagram, as well as Snapchat. And my Facebook is just Mr. Luke. Search it up. should come up. So uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say. Hopefully you did enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next video.